Hey everybody. In this video we're going to be talking about how to prove the formulas for the volumes of a sphere and cone using single variable calculus techniques. Uh, as children we were given these formulas without any clear explanation as to how they were derived. And since they are derived using calculus, we couldn't have been given an explanation back then. So now we're going to look at what we can do to try to prove these formulas. So, starting with our sphere, we're going to start with a technique taught in Calculus 2 called the cylindrical shells technique. The idea is that we're going to rotate a semicircle. Let's call this the right hand of a semicircle. We all know the formula of a circle is given by x squared plus y squared equals r squared. And yes, the circle is centered at the origin to make things simpler for us, uh, where r is going to be the radius of the semicircle. Now, we're going to have to rotate this circle around about the y-axis so that we're going to get a full sphere. But the way to do it is we're going to form cylindrical shells. So, for example, let's start with this small rectangle here at r. It's going to be a small rectangle, and what it's going to look like when it's revolved around the y-axis is it's going to look like a shell, essentially. And then we're going to take the next bigger rectangle, and each of these rectangles has infinitesimally small widths, or we're going to call it dx, because they're along the x-axis. And the next one will have a bigger height, a smaller radius, so it's going to look something like this. And we're going to keep, we're going to keep doing this. We're going to keep taking bigger and bigger rectangles, and we're eventually going to get a shape that looks more and more like this. And as you can see, as we take these big and big rectangles, this shape is going to resemble a solid sphere. And if we sum up all of these um, volumes of all these cylindrical shells, we're going to get the volume of the sphere. Now, how do we do this? So, if you take one of these shells, just pretend we take one of these rectangles, and we unravel it, it's going to look a little something like this. The size is, of course, exaggerated for you guys to see, but um, this is essentially if we take one of these cylindrical shells, and these shells do have, they do have a width. They have an infinitesimally small width called dx. So it's as if we took one of these shells and we sliced it open right here, and we just unfolded it and got this essentially block. Now, if you think about it, this is not a perfect uh, rectangular prism, but because the width is so small, it's, it approximates the rectangular prism very closely. So, we have to think about this. What was the radius of this shell? It was some distance x, right? Because it's x away from the center right here, x. So, the circumference of the shell was 2 pi x. What was the height? Well, the height was, this height right here, half of it is y, so this is 2y. And what is the thickness? It's the dx that we had here. So, to find the volume of this, we just use length times width times height. So, essentially, it's 2 pi x, 2y, dx. And now, we don't just want one of those. We want to sum them up. We want to sum all of those up as, um, and we want to use dx because we're integrating with respect to x here. We want to sum all of them up. I'm going to take this 2 pi right here and this 2 and combine them to a 4 pi and move them outside the integral so we can clean this up a little bit. Um, and I'm going to leave the x in here and I'm going to leave the y in here. Okay. Um, and essentially we're integrating these from when x is equal to 0 to when x is equal to r. And because this is the integral with respect to x, we can't leave any y's in here. We need to convert them. And how do we convert them? We're going to be using this formula that's right here. So y equals, um, it's going to be equal to radical r squared minus x squared. We're going to go ahead and put that in. So it's going to be x times the radical of r squared minus x squared dx. Now we need to use some u substitution. So we're going to u equal r squared minus x squared. So that negative du over 2 equals, that's going to be equal to rx dx. And our x dx quantity is right here, comprised of this x and this dx, so that when we do this, it's going on from 0 to r, and it's going to be, we're going to take the negative 1 half from the negative du over 2 and put it out here. And, um, and then we're going to go ahead and do radical 
U, D, U. And these limits, I should really change them at this point because they should be in respect to U. So when we put U, when we put 0 into our formula for U right here, uh, when we put 0 into X, we get R squared. And we put R into X, we get 0. And integrating this, we get 2 thirds U to 3 over 2 going from R squared to 0. So when we put uh, 0 into here, it becomes 0. When you put r squared into here, it becomes negative 2 thirds r cubed. So we get negative 2 thirds r cubed out here. And don't forget this quantity out here, the constant. So that, that's negative 2 pi because it's 4 pi and times negative 1 half. So it's negative 2 pi. A negative and a negative right here become a basically positive. And we get the formula multiplying all this together right here. We get 4 pi over 3 r cubed which we know as the volume of our sphere.